you had mentioned that over the course of metastatic disease, about three quarters of people would get lung mets. How does liver mets compare? How common is liver mets in, in the course of metastatic breast cancer? So liver mets can occur in about half of women with metastatic breast cancer, so a little less commonly, but still common. Okay. And again, is it more common in certain types of situations or at certain times? Um, I think that we can see it in all the different subtypes of breast cancer. And in general, when it comes to patients developing metastatic disease, some of that's going to depend on as I mentioned to you, about 6% of people present with metastatic disease. Um, when it comes to sort of the follow-up, it's going to depend on the, the biology or the subtype of cancer that they had, as well as kind of their response to initial treatments. So for hormone positive disease, um, people can develop metastatic disease. Usually it's anywhere from a couple of years out from their treatment to say up to 10 years or so. Um, sometimes we do see late recurrences. For a triple negative and HER2 positive, it would be very unusual to develop liver mets after about five years. Okay, thank you. And what are the situations when you would want to investigate that there might be liver mets present? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, I think Certainly, I, so sometimes people are in situations where we'll notice they have abnormal liver function tests. So they're coming in for routine blood work or to assess um, medication side effects, and they have new abnormalities in some of their liver numbers on, on blood tests. There are lots of reasons to have abnormal liver numbers. Um, one really commonly is um, like fatty liver. So as we have an increasing number of overweight individuals in our country, we're seeing more and more elevations in liver numbers just from sort of fatty deposition in the liver. Um, lots of medications can cause elevations in liver function tests, the most common being like statins. Um, there's alcohol use if somebody went out and had a very big weekend and came in and had their lab tests on Monday. Um, but I think if these persisted, uh, meaning uh, um, that, that it's worth evaluating and having like further workup with imaging. And are there any signs that a patient might experience where it might, you would want them to come in and talk to you? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, other things that would, I would say for sure you need to come in. So pain that's new and different for somebody, you should go in and get evaluated. And I always tell patients anything that's persistent um, over, let's just, I usually use a week and a half to two weeks. Um, I use that for, as an example of, you know, we all go out and do new activities or new things that might be sore, but if something's new and different and persisting for, you know, 10 to 14 days and go in and get looked at, I mean, your liver kind of sits in the right upper side of your abdomen. So if you notice persistent pain there, for sure, go in and get looked at. And then rarely um, metastases in the liver, people can come in with looking yellow or jaundiced, um, in which case you'd want to go in and get looked at. Um, jaundice oftentimes shows up initially in people's eyes. So they'll mm -hmm. notice actually that their eyes look somewhat yellow and discolored. Um, and that's a good reason to go in and get looked at. So they would be seeing that in their eyes. Would they be seeing it on their skin or in their nails or any other place? You can notice it in your skin. Um, the nails, I would not use probably the nails as your only indicator, knowing that lots of other things can affect nails. And especially when people have gone through breast cancer treatment and have had chemo, they all know their nails look a little different. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So once you've determined that a person has liver mets, and, and actually, why don't I back up? How would you determine that a person has liver mets? Yeah, it's a good question. So it oftentimes, unless some I image, so usually we'll recommend imaging. Sometimes imaging is done with an ultrasound, specifically looking at the liver. For patients with a breast cancer history, more commonly we'll end up doing a CT scan. In really rare instances, a liver MRI might be ordered, um, especially if um, in really rare instances, um, breast cancer in the liver will kind of show up as think about it as um, sort of seeding kind of multiple different areas as opposed to say like one large nodule or mass. 
Um, so usually we do imaging first. Um, if something looks abnormal like that, then there's sent for a biopsy. Um, most of the time these biopsies are done by interventional radiology um, where um, similar to the lung biopsy, um, they'll take you into the interventional radiology suite. They'll use a CT scan, um, give you some medication to kind of relax you and then numb up the skin on the upper part of your abdomen and use a needle to take a sample, um, looking at the CT scan to make sure that they're in the right spot for that. And then that's sent down to the pathology lab. And is it standard to do a biopsy of liver mets or is that something you would wanna ask for or, or need to ask for? Um, I would say, Oftentimes we will do liver biopsies. So sometimes it's really clear um, that this is metastatic breast cancer. So if somebody had very high risk disease and, um, and let's just say it's right after they finished their treatment and I was very worried about the aggressive nature of their treatment to start with and they had lots of spots where really it couldn't be anything but cancer. Um, in some situations like that, biopsy is not done. But the flip side of that, if you have somebody who's been doing really well for quite a long time, um, and this is something very new, um, then we usually will always recommend a biopsy. Um, so I would ask for it. Um, that tissue is also really, as I mentioned, very useful to look at again, to look at the receptor status again. And more and more, we're doing something called next generation sequencing on our metastatic cancers, which really takes the sample, gets sent to a lab to really look at what are the mutations in that cancer? What are their potential treatment options down the road? Are there any specific treatments that are used for liver mets? Is the approach similar to other areas of metastasis in terms of local and systemic treatments? Yeah, it's a really good um, question, Janine. There's, when I think of liver mets, you, you wanna ask some of the same questions as the lung mets. So is there cancer in lots of places elsewhere in the body? Um, systemic treatment is always gonna be a good option because it's gonna go everywhere and treat, I always tell patients it's gonna treat what we can see also going to treat microscopic disease that we can't see. Um, but in the situations where you might have one or two lesions in the liver um, and not a lot going on anywhere else in the body, either meaning they started treatment and now only the liver has these two spots um, or that it presented with only these, say, couple spots, um, sometimes we'll do liver-directed therapy. Um, I had mentioned earlier that Sometimes we can do focused radiation, um, but a lot of liver-directed therapy is done with a, a team of specialists. Um, so sometimes we'll surgically remove um, a, a liver met, and that can be done by a liver surgeon or a surgical oncologist. In some situations, a general surgeon. More and more commonly, if I'm going to switch somebody's systemic treatment, we'll talk about aggressive liver-directed therapy that's oftentimes done by our interventional radiology team. And there's a few approaches that they can do. They can go in and, and do um, a type of radiofrequency ablation. So taking a probe and kind of actually burning the cancer. Mm -hmm. um, they can sometimes do a procedure called chemoembolization where they actually give chemotherapy right into that spot. Um, and more and more commonly, we've been using a technique called Y90, which is actually a type of radiation, but it's a radiation type of beads that are um, given. So when someone goes through that procedure, they actually, the radiologist will give you some relaxation medications. They'll use a probe that um, goes up through the vessels into the liver, and then they'll use these radiation beads to actually kind of... Um, uh, it essentially burns that area, but it treats it with radiation and then patients go home that same day. Can you talk about any exciting clinical trials that you are seeing in this area and, and what you sort of see as the future of research for liver mets? Yeah, um, really good question. I mentioned to you this NRG trial that's looking at oligometastatic disease, and that would include somebody with just a couple sites of uh, metastatic disease. And we're excited to see the results of that. So in that trial, they're taking patients with 
less than five sites of metastatic disease. And that would include if they were in the liver and treating them with focused radiation to those metastatic disease in, in addition to systemic treatment. Um, so that's an exciting trial to look at is that helping patients with being extra aggressive. Um, I think the techniques using Y90 are actually really exciting. Um, they allow patients to not have to go through a big liver surgery and recover from that and go through sort of a hospitalization. And it allows them to stay on systemic treatment um, and really get very similar um, outcomes. So those types of techniques are very exciting as well as um, SBRT, which is really a focused type of radiation treatment given typically over five doses by our radiation oncologist um, to try to directly treat those areas. So all of those I think are really exciting. Great, that is really exciting. And in terms of the types of side effects that people might have from, from treatments for liver mats, um, or as symptoms of the disease itself, what are some of the strategies that you employ to, to help people with some of the, the issues that you described earlier around um, pain, for example? Yeah, um, so some people may not have any symptoms from liver mets. Um, and I mentioned a couple of other scenarios where, or if you know somebody who's had breast cancer and has a lot of disease in their liver, they may notice sort of pain over that area. Um, sometimes people will not feel well if they end up with sort of obstruction in the bile ducts. So your liver drains bile. And if a cancerous area is kind of really close to one of those areas where it drains, um, they may come in not feeling very well, sort of presenting feeling kind of yellow and overall not, not feeling well and, and oftentimes are sick with infection. Um, in general, I think to, I oftentimes talk to patients of my goal is to keep your liver functioning well. Um, and for a couple different reasons, um, probably the most important when you've got advanced breast cancer is that most of our chemotherapy drugs are cleared by the liver. So if somebody has so much disease in their liver that it's not functioning well, um, it then gets really hard to treat. Um, so that's always my goal is how do I keep you feeling well, um, but how do I keep your liver healthy and feeling well? Um, an elevation in some of the liver tests themselves does not always mean the liver is not functioning well, but it's something we want to do something about. Um, so I think talking to your doctor about it is how's my liver function? Um, and cause that's a, an important thing. Um, and then how am I feeling? And that can oftentimes help us direct our, our therapies. Thank you so much, Dr. Blaze. You've shared so much helpful information about the approaches that you take to treating liver and lung mats. I just want to close with a, with a last question, which is what, what is one thing that you would want um, a person going through metastatic breast cancer treatment to understand about a diagnosis of either liver or lung mats? Yeah, so I think when somebody has liver or lung metastases from their breast cancer, I think I would, in today's world, I would, to me, when you're caring for somebody, it's always important to have hope. Um, and I would say, um, be hopeful that there are new techniques um, there are also new um, systemic treatments with the goal really of um, helping people to continue to feel well. Um, usually when breast cancer has spread into those other areas, the vast majority of the time, the cancer is not curable, but it's treatable. And so whatever kind of treatment you're getting, you always want to ask, how am I going to feel after this? because I want you to keep feeling well. I want you to keep being able to do your usual things. And, um, and that I think is a really important thing, but I would say have hope because there's a lot of new techniques. We talked today about some of the specific ones for um, metastases, but there's a lot of new systemic treatments too. And, um, and those are encouraging. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thanks to all of you for listening and being with us. To get more information about liver and lung mats, please visit lbbc.org, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.
Thanks, Dr. Blaze. Thank you for having me.